so you guys are all thumbs up right now. I guess that means I should start talking. Uh huh. Okay, hi, I'm Julian Sprung from Two Little Fishies, and I'm going to talk to you today about the use of calcium hydroxide, otherwise known as Kalkwasser. Basically, you know, since most people years ago were adding it with a drip method, what, what they were doing is they would add excess calcium hydroxide to a gallon or a two gallon jug of water, shake it up, let it settle, and then they would decant the clear solution and drip that into the aquarium because there was this fear if you added the cloudy solution, it was going to raise the pH too hot. And I thought about it and I thought, that can't be right. What it is, is you can't add too much. Well, what is too much? What's the amount? So I did some tests to try to figure out if I added how much powder to how many gallons of aquarium, how high would the pH go? So I had a pH meter. And, and to make a long story short, uh, what I discovered was that approximately a quarter of a teaspoon added to approximately 50 gallons will raise the pH to a, about 8.4, maybe 8.5 if you're really less than 50 gallons. If it's 30 gallons, you're still in the window of okay, you're not gonna kill your tank. Uh, less than 30 gallons, you're gonna need to be less than a quarter of a teaspoon, okay? Uh, so there, there's a, a range, uh, but I call it a quarter teaspoon per 50 gallons per hour. Okay, so if you add that now, you can wait an hour and you can add a quarter teaspoon again. So if you didn't have a job and you wanted to maintain the calcium and alkalinity of your aquarium, you could set your alarm and every hour add a quarter of a teaspoon in a certain amount of water and add it to your aquarium. Now, if you are really handy and you've got an apex controller and you build some kind of a robotic device, you could theoretically just spoon in that powder, <laughs> set up a device, somebody watching this going, yeah, I could do that. Um, but most of us, if we're, we're adding it by hand, we do it when we're at home and maybe we only add it a couple of times a day, maybe in the morning, in the evening, and that, that's fine. I have maintained the aquariums here that way for a number of years. They, they have a relatively low uh, demand of calcium and alkalinity and I was adding it by hand. Only recently, I. Uh, took a long extended trip and there wasn't anybody here to add the calcium and alkalinity by hand uh, So I set them up automatically and we'll, we'll look at that later uh, But I, I utilize that concept of a quarter teaspoon per 50 gallons per hour to figure out how to dose uh, the Kalkwasser even with my uh, Kalkwasser reactor um, and, and that's how I, I limit the timing for the dosing as opposed to using a level switch, which I don't recommend for Kalkwasser dosing. If you're going to use a level switch, there is a risk that something will cause the level switch to malfunction. If it's a float type level switch and a snail gets in your sump and crawls on the level switch, the weight of the snail holds that down and then your pump is dosing, 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 and your pH goes too high if you're using Kalkwasser. Uh, there are other things that can cause a level switch to fail, so you want to avoid that. If you're going to use a level switch for your top off with Kalkwasser, then you want to have some kind of a timing limit uh, so that if the level switch says, give me some more water, there's a timer that says, okay, I'll give you more water, but only for 20 seconds or maybe a minute, and then you got to wait an hour. <laughs> so something like that. I mean, another thing that can make a level switch come on is if a protein skimmer starts over being overactive and, and skimming so much that the water is being dumped out of the tank and then your uh, level switch says hey the water level just went down but you just lost salt water um, so a timing device would help prevent disaster with that so we're talking about kalkwasser oh, there you go in case you wondered how that was spelled uh, this is Two Little Fishies Kalkwasser, and here is our Kalkwasser reactor. Um, the reactor is not pressurized, so even when it's working, you can add 
the Kalkwasser. You can open this up, it's not going to leak. Um, see, I keep my handy spoon right inside there. And, you know, you just add a couple of spoons. I do this about once a week. <laughs> just like that. Now you can see what uh, Kalkwasser in water looks like. It's cloudy, just like that. It's not very soluble. Um, this reactor, when the pump that supplies it is turned on, it mixes the calcium hydroxide that is sitting on the bottom and creates a cloudy solution up to about this high because when it comes on, it only comes on for about a minute at a time. So the space here is a clear, saturated solution of Kalkwasser. Here was the freshly mixed, uh, super saturated, cloudy Kalkwasser. And that excess, when the water is entering, just flows right in there. You can see it's still dripping. That's all. As I mentioned, a uh, quarter of a teaspoon uh, per 50 gallons per hour. So how do you measure a quarter of a teaspoon? Well, you can get a, one of those uh, spoon measuring sets, and if it has a little quarter teaspoon on it, you can use that. Or after you've done that a few times, you, you got a pretty good idea of what a quarter of a teaspoon looks like, and you can just have a regular spoon. It's kind of like the tip of the spoon. So that's a quarter teaspoon, more or less. Put it into the bucket. Now, calcium hydroxide will take react with carbon dioxide in the air, so you don't want to leave the jar of Kalkwasser open, or it will lose its potency. It'll turn to calcium carbonate. And you don't want to leave this sitting here very long. You want to quickly put water on it, as I'm doing now. And so I've now made a slightly uh, cloudy solution. That quarter of a teaspoon will dissolve pretty well in about a quart. Um, if you put it in, in less than a quart, say in a cup, just keep it stirring, it's going to be cloudy. And then you can just add it somewhere where there's a, a current, a stream of water movement. You don't want to concentrate the high pH solution on any corals. This tank has its return right here. Um, and as I just showed you, you don't have to drip it in. It can be added all at once as long as you're within those parameters of a quarter teaspoon per 50 gallons per hour. Bye everybody, so long. <laughs> Enjoy your reef aquariums. Uh, use Kalkwasser, say it correctly. You don't want to embarrass me or yourself. And um, see you next time.